Hey everyone here from Tunnel Vision TV and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to create a splash in Maya 2018 using Bifrost so let's get started okay so here we are in maya 2018 you should be able to follow along in previous versions as well and as you can see this is what we're going to be creating a nice splash a nice liquid splash and um so yeah let's click on file new scene and i don't want to save that and then i'm going to make sure that i'm on the modeling tab here at the top and uh, first of all we're going to create our container and then the emitter so i'm going to go to poly modeling and i'm going to create a simple box and I'm going to go to poly cube to set the dimensions or the sizes. So let me just uh, select this cube and press F on the keyboard to focus on that. And uh, then I'm going to increase the width and the depth. And uh, right slightly, let's make it 4 by 2 by 4, something nice like that. And uh, then I'm going to move it up. So I'm pressing W on the keyboard, moving it up. And um, then I'm going to right click on it, select face, and I'm going to select this top face. Um, just to create like a container like a bucket so with this face selected i'm going to go to edit mesh and then extrude and i'm going to change the offset so it's got something like that and then i'm pressing q on the keyboard and then with that face still selected i'm going to go to edit mesh extrude and then i'm just going to move it down something like that right then we can right click go back to object mode and uh, next we're going to create our emitter so i'm going to create another cube and I'm going to move it up, pressing W, moving it up. And uh, now I'm going to go into wireframe mode. So click on shading and then select wireframe so that we can see the size of our emitter inside of this box. So I'm going to move it down and um, with this emitter box selected, I'm going to increase the width to around 3.8 maybe. Um, the height we can do 1.2 maybe and the depth 3.8 as well. So you don't want it to go over the size of this box. You can see that it's slightly too big. So let's make it 3.5 maybe and 3.5. So now if we look at it from the top, you can see it's not touching the edges. And if we look from the side, you can see it's kind of touching the bottom. So I'm just going to move it up slightly, something like that. All right, let's go back into Smooth Shade All. And um, there we have our emitter and that's going to be the liquid emitter basically. So now we're going to go into the FX panel here on the side. And uh, we're going to start with the emitter, so we're going to select the inside box or the inside cube. So with this inside cube selected, I'm going to go to Bifrost Fluids, and then I'm going to click on Liquid. Alright, so that's going to create all the properties and the emitter as well. So the first thing that I'm going to change is the point size. So if you expand your Bifrost Liquid 1, and you click on Liquid 1, you can set the point size. And that's just the way it's displaying in the viewport, so I'm going to set that to 3, so we can see these nice little blue dots. And uh, then I'm going to right click on my timeline here at the bottom and I'm going to go to playback speed and then make sure this is set to play every frame max real time. That's just so that it's not skipping frames and that the simulation will work correctly. All right, now we need to set our collider or the actual container. So that's actually colliding with the liquid. So I'm going to select my uh, liquid box, this uh, surrounding box that we have, or you can click on your Bifrost liquid here in the outliner. And uh, then I'm going to shift click on this container, all right, like that. And then I'm going to go to Bifrost Fluids and we're going to select Collider. And then I want to increase the resolution of our simulation. So I'm going to go to our Bifrost Liquid Properties 1. And uh, then I'm going to set the master voxel size. So the smaller this is, the higher is the resolution. So I'm going to set it to 0 0.2. Okay, that's nice and high. Okay, next what I want to do is I want to select my emitter and I just want to move it up slightly. Uh, just so that I can see that it's actually falling into the container. And uh, one more thing, I want to create a kill plane. So everything that spills over the edges, that it will actually disappear. That the simulation will actually compute a little bit faster. So I'm going to select my Bifrost liquid again. And I'm going to go to Bifrost fluids here at the top. And I'm going to click on kill plane. And then I'm going to scale it up. So I'm pressing R on the keyboard. Scaling it up. And uh, this will be our kill plane. Okay, I'm going to go into the front view. And uh, then I'm just going to move this kill plane up. So I'm selecting that. And uh, let's just focus in there. Move it up with W. And I'm going to set it right below our container. Something like that. Let's scale it up slightly. So everything that falls over or spills out will be killed by this plane. All right, let's go back into perspective. And uh, then we can actually run our simulation. So make sure that you're on the first frame and hit play to start the simulation. Okay, you can see the liquid is falling into the container. Some of it's spilling over. 
so let's just let it simulate and there you can see it's disappearing the kill plane is working and i'm just going to let it run for a couple of frames and just give it some time so that everything kind of spills over the edge that wants to spill over all right that's okay for now so i'm going to stop it click on stop and then i want to set this to my initial state so i'm going to explain that now so now you just select your bifrost liquid one year in the outliner and then you go to bifrost fluids at the top and you click on set initial state now this will actually set this as the initial state so basically if i now go back to my first frame this will be my first frame so now if i start to simulate it will actually carry on from that state which is pretty cool all right so you don't have to rerun that first part where you're filling the container so i'm going to stop that go back to the first frame and then i'm going to click on this box that i used as the emitter and i'm just going to move it out of the way we don't really need it anymore so i'm just going to move it out of the way like that okay next we want to create a sphere that's going to actually fall into the liquid so under your poly modeling i'm going to click on sphere and i'm going to move it up maybe slightly higher something like that so under your poly sphere one i'm going to set the radius to 0.6 okay that is cool and next we want to give it some physics properties so with the sphere selected i'm going to go to my bullet tab and then i'm going to click on the first little icon and that will basically give it the active rigid body properties so just click that once and um, i don't know sometimes it gives you an error just ignore that it actually works and uh, if i play this back now you'll see that that sphere will actually start to fall and if we leave it you will see that it's going to fall right through the liquid and right through everything so i'm going to stop that and i'm going to go back to the first frame and then i'm going to select my bifrost liquid one and then i'm going to shift click on the sphere and i'm going to select bifrost fluids and then i'm going to click on collider all right so that's going to make the sphere a collider as well so now if you select your sphere and you go into your bullet rigid body shape one properties uh, you get all your dynamic properties here and currently the collider shape type is set to box and obviously that's not a box so we need to change this to sphere okay and i'm also going to increase the mass currently it's set to one i'm going to increase this to maybe something like 50 so it's nice and heavy and uh, let's go to our first frame and let's click on play and there you can see it's interacting with our liquid and let's wait for the splash And as you can see, it's not the biggest splash in the world, but you can obviously change the size of the sphere that's actually falling into the liquid. Or you can change the shape and go crazy and just experiment and see what effects you can get from this. And that's how easy it is to create a splash in Maya 2018. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Click on that thumbs up if you did. And also remember to click on that subscribe button if you want to be notified of new weekly tutorials. I upload motion graphics and visual effects tutorials on a weekly basis. So yeah, it really helps me a lot if you click on subscribe. And it also gives you guys free tutorials. So it's a bit of a win-win situation. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching. See you guys next time. Cheers. Bye.